Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to another episode of Witness with Wahid. Uh, you know, I should tell you this. Every now and then, this program receives a special blessing. We, we get a chance to welcome a very, very special guest. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I have for you an old friend, somebody who has been with me on this program before, somebody who is not from the Maldives. Some of you might probably have guessed it right. Yes, it is my very good old friend, my, my Muslim brother. I think I sh everybody knows him in this country as uh, Sheikh Mink. And with that, let me just say a couple of words of welcome. Sir, it's such a pleasure to have you again. Uh, not only because you're such an affable, such a friendly person, but at the same time, because you're so flexible, so adjustable, and yet so, so simple and humble at the same time, despite, uh, let me put it in another way, in, in modern terms, uh, despite the number of hits you have on YouTube, Wow, subhanAllah. Jazakallah khair, mashallah. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Indeed, the honor is mine, and it's always good to make time uh, for programs like these. And uh, like you say, you know, we're all human beings. I think we all go through similar challenges, and we all face uh, the same things in life uh, to a different uh, depth, perhaps. And therefore, when we are normal human beings and we actually live as normal, we become flexible, we, be we understand other people. We understand not to trample on people's toes. You know, we understand how to respect each other. And I think I've tried to be as real as possible. Uh, you know, and this is why even when, as an Islamic scholar, when people look at you, they expect you to be hard and harsh and you know, strict and issuing all these uh, you know, scary fatwas. It's not that way. You know, Islam is a very practical faith. It's very simple. Uh, I think we make it difficult for ourselves sometimes. And, you know, taking into consideration the situation of the people is also a part of Islam. You know, I have this feeling that Islam is something you really do not have to make any effort to get into. You kind of get in there and c you just slide into it so comfortably. Do you have that feeling sometimes? Yes, indeed. Obviously, I mean, we all face challenges, but at the same time, uh, with Islam, uh, it is there to create that ease for us you know, to create that uh, smooth flow, so to speak, as you say. So Alhamdulillah, yeah, I, I agree with you totally. You know, I have, I have an idea for you tonight, which, which goes like this. I know somewhere down the line while you're in the Maldives, you're going to talk about, and this is what I was told, you're going to talk about our responsibility, individually yes. and perhaps even collectively, as Muslims. I'll, I'll do a take on that, if you wouldn't mind, which goes like this. You see, very often, uh, especially w with children, you hear this statement, you have to be kind to your parents. And all this, yes. you know, um, sometimes, and this has been a doubt, you know, which sometimes comes to me. Do you always have to be, always in all times, have to be nice and kind to your parents because there are sometimes parents who biologically become the vessel, a carrier, of bringing another biological entity into the world, the spiritual side, never mind that. And then they would abandon the biological product of their loins and go away. Does that biological product owe any allegiance to to the <laughs> you know the vessel, kind of, yes as it were i think uh, that's extremely important and you know what islam has covered that in the sense that if you take a look at the quran and the sunnah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it speaks of kindness kindness mm -hmm. is not necessarily obedience so you know kindness is also to animals kindness is also even to the dog for example in fact even to a pig if a person sees a pig it doesn't mean that because the pig is you know, you know not consumed and so on that you just got to act cruel to it not at all you have to be kind to all the creatures of the same maker so yes, yes the almighty used certain people to bear you biologically sometimes those people are not fit to be obeyed at all but kindness you have to over time prove that you're the better one by being kind 
kindness, we cannot say that, uh, you know, even if there is a thief that you've caught, you cannot just beat him up until he dies. You have to be kind. Kind meaning you've caught him, you've perhaps uh, tied him up, and mm. you wait for the police. That is kindness to him. At you might the same time, if he asks for a glass of water, by exactly all means, Exactly what crossed my mind. If he asks for a glass of water or if he needs food or something, give it to him. Which, by the way, I'm going to have, but please carry on. MashaAllah, barakallahi. So the same applies if you take a look at the prisoners of war at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He actually preached how to be kind to them and he, he spoke about treating them well. Even those who work for you and I. Uh, we, w we are taught how to treat them, how to be kind to them. So from the issue of uh, parents, it, it's kindness that, that is outstanding. But obedience is not necessary uh, when they are wrong or when they are asking you to do something ridiculous or when they themselves need help mm -hmm. uh, in, in streamlining themselves towards the right direction. So yes, you do have sometimes parents who are uh, perhaps uh, who are on drugs and who mm -hmm. have very bad habits and who well, are... Recently we had the case of, uh, and I hate to bring this out, but um, a woman who gave birth at a hospital and then abandoned her baby and disappeared. You know, uh, yes, that is very bad. We would try and counsel her. We would try and help her to understand and realize before the baby actually grows up to understand what has happened. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think we need to take into consideration the circumstances surrounding this particular Absolutely. abandonment. Yes. Because we need to understand the lady. Why? What is it? A normal human being would not do that. So what is it that led her to do this? And we need to address that to start with. Yes, the route would sir. go back that way. So many of us would look at the story and say, what a bad woman. But a leader would look at the lady and say, why did this happen? Let me go back. Let me, let me interview her. Let me talk. Let's see what challenges she faced. It, perhaps if we alleviated what she faced, she would never have done that. So, so uh, we, we are not saying or condoning what she did, but we're trying to solve the matter, resolve it, look deeper into it, make sure it doesn't happen again. And that's where Islam goes. At the same time, that woman also needs help. That's what it is. The woman needs perhaps more help than the baby. Today, up for adoption, so many women, so many children would adopt babies, you know, who couldn't have kids, for example. But no one would adopt an adult. Oh, know? yes. <laughs> they, they, would, they would actually look at you differently, you know. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you working? But take a look at these people. Try and help them see what happened, what went wrong. She might have some issues, you know. Mm -hmm. What happens, supposing, if this baby grows up and does not receive the right guidance? the right vision, the right wisdom, comes face to face with this woman who abandoned him at birth. And then, perhaps a lot of hatred comes pouring out, then what? Like I said, Islam has covered this. If you know of the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, the Prophet yes, Joseph, yes. may peace be upon him, something similar, but not from a parent, from siblings, had happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was thrown into the well, yes. literally, and for years on end, he had struggled uh, in his own way. And they were excited about the fact that they got rid of their brother. And later on, it so happened that when he was a successful human being, Allah made him meet his brothers. And he looked them in the eye, and guess what? What did he do? He said, he said, I forgive you today. Allah has favored me above you. Had it not been for what you did, did to me, perhaps mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been on my seat here. So I forgive you and let's not talk about the past. That's what he did. So I believe if this young girl or this child has to grow up and face the mother who abandoned the child, I think the child would be at, in, a, in a position of test where, how's your heart? Are you uh -huh. prepared to release or are you prepared to hold? You wouldn't blame them if they held a feeling, a human feeling, to say, you abandoned me, you know. But generally, Allah took care of you. You always need to remember you belong to Allah. Allah chose for you without a single say of your own who your parents would be. And Allah chose them for a reason. So if they had to be good or bad, Allah knows that was their test. But you don't fail yours. Mm -hmm. So you might want to say, Mom, I'm upset with you. I think what you did was very bad. I think it was wrong. But at the end of the day, I forgive you. I don't really want to have too much to do with you, and I don't even want to think too much about it. But that same mom might come to you and say, look, my child, I was wrong. Today I'm in need. Okay. Now you're the bigger person. You have to. It happens to us as human beings. Sometimes someone does bad to you, and tomorrow they need your help, or you're in a position of authority. Are you going to use your position of authority to fix someone who was nasty to you when you were not in that position of authority? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to be bigger than that as a Muslim and say, you know what? 
They were nasty, but no problem. Allah has blessed me. Allah has given me. I'll be kind to them. Let's send for them something. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when the, when, when the lady was actually uh, throwing rubbish in his direction when he used to pass the gully and alley, mm -hmm. he then asked the day that she, she didn't do that, are you okay? Is everything fine? Are you, you know, are you well? And she was not well. And that's what resulted in her accepting Islam because she realized this is far bigger than what a normal human being would actually do. I mean, I'm harming this person every day. The day I'm not well, he comes to me and asks me, are you okay? Absolutely, Amazing. isn't it? Amazing. So, Islam's Something else you said. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just hanging on to it. A, a phrase that you used. Yes. It's all in the past. Subhanallah, that's true. It's all in the you past. You just said it. It's all in the past. And you have to. You How have about to. this? How about this? Yes. How about the uh, positive psychological benefit that immediately accrues to somebody who is willing to let go of the past? I think th people don't realize the benefit that they achieve by forgiving others. Uh, people think, you, I'm going to fix you up because you did this to me and that to me, not realizing it's building the stress, the pressure, the mountain of you know, emotions and feelings and so much, you, you have not broken loose, you know. Mm -hmm. The minute you say, listen, it's forgiven, it's gone, and I don't want to talk about it. You know, we normally say forgive and forget. I don't think it's as easy to forget as it mm. is to forgive. We've got exactly. to be honest. Because you, you could have forgiven someone and years later you're talking about it, you know, but not because you want to uh, go back there, but because you say, look, that was a day that I will remember. You it's know? a fact of life. It it's happened, fact, so yes. what? Yes. So I, kind I, of I prefer not to use the term forgive and forget. Rather, you know, uh, forgive and move on. Forgive uh, and move on. Yes, forgive and move on. I, I need to carry on. I've got more important things in life. I think that deserves a T-shirt, actually. <laughs> forgive and, <laughs> forgive move, and on. move on. Yeah. Not forgive and forget. I think yes. that's a better message. Yes. yes. Any, anywhere uh, in, in any of the Islamic scriptures actually says forgive and move on? Uh, I think the Quran speaks about that a lot. And maybe not the same words, but the Quran does say uh, whoever forgives will actually benefit themselves. You know, they would be the successful. Uh, wh that is the best thing you could do. There you go. There you go. Uh, whoever bears patience. Now, sabr could also mean restrain yourself. So, yes. whoever restrains themselves and forgives, then that is the best thing that you could do for your sake and for the sake of Allah. So that's I think the that should, that should go on some of these textbooks on counseling, yeah. don't you think? I really think so. And you know, I, I've been uh, trying to help people in that direction. In my old life, I've tried to apply that as well, because you do have people who say nasty things, who pro perhaps don't know you, they, they call you names, they label you and so on. Yeah, forgive them, move on. Sometimes it's not even worth going to engage them, because some people won't understand, and you would have wasted your time uh, my life is focused on achieving this. If, if I'm going to start responding to someone who doesn't like me, I might not be able to, to, to progress in the short space of time. It's like a football uh, match. Oh, oh, oh uh, my brother, this, this might be a place where you and I disagree. Yes. Again, for, you know, no, some, no, something fine. you said. Uh, this fine. is what I mean. That's what this is all about. Yes. You know, um, I don't know if I agree with you on this. It's like some people are so focused on something other than what is perhaps desirable for us. Yes. That maybe it's not worth our time to go and engage. I don't know, there's something in me that tells me, hey, no, no, why don't you still try some engagement? Okay, I, I think we agree that there, there's a stage when you do try, and there are certain people that you would try. That much we can agree. But okay. I, I've come across people whom the more you try, the worse it becomes. This so is where I'm learning from you, please. Yes. It, it does happen at a certain point. And I tell you, I, I believe in life we have, you know, football matches 90 minutes, we have 90 years, if mm -hmm. you're lucky, if the match goes right to well, the end. Well, if it's very lucky, yes. yeah. So during the 90 minutes, we're focused on trying to score a goal and making sure that they don't score a goal. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's football. Yes. So if you are now going to focus on the referee and why he did this instead, you're probably going to get a yellow card, a red card, you're going to have to Absolutely. go out. Absolutely, know? yes. Or if you're focusing on the people in the, in the stadium and waving at them, and you know, they're going to score a goal and you're going to miss your opportunity. Okay. So it's better to be focused. You know, th if someone throws something on the pitch, you can pick it up and throw it out quickly, but you're carrying on the match. But you cannot stop and pause your match in order to address the, you know, the, the guys who are cheering 
uh, and or, or the referee, for example. If there is an injury, there is a bit of time that happens, yes, you will address it and so on. So I, I, that's just an example I'm giving. But in real life, we have a similar, slightly different, but similar situation where I need to pack away as many good deeds, help as many people. I need to try and do as many good deeds as possible so that the minute my eyes close, I've, I've won the match. Okay. Oh, oh this, this brings me to this saying, which I always misquote. I wouldn't do it. I'll just let you just have a hint, which is like something about pleasing people and all the people all the time and some of the people some of the time and some of the people all the time. I don't know. Yes. You know, you've you heard cannot, this. You cannot please all of the people all of the time. That's, okay. that's true. Yeah. Exactly. So it, it brings us down to that as well. Exactly. You, you try your best, but then mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, uh, you have people who are preconditioned and people who are so passionate about what they, like you say, what they believe in or, or what they're doing that they see no importance in what others are doing. That happens to scholars as well. And oh. I'm one of those who, who actually promotes all, uh, as many people as I can in their own fields. I believe you can be the best Muslim, but you're a doctor. You know, you might not be able to uh, read as much Quran. You might not even understand so much, but you're serving, you're scoring goal after goal every day. Yes. Helping people, good health, maybe eyesight, maybe everything else. You're a brilliant Muslim. We're, we're not going to compromise the, the basic pillars of Islam, but beyond that, that which is voluntary and so on, this is your way of earning paradise. So Absolutely. I think we need to look, uh, let's say, at television station, for example, you're reaching out to so many people. If I were to impose on you to do what I believe is easier for me to do in terms of voluntary acts of worship, you wouldn't even be here because it would be unfair. Absolutely. So I believe we'd, everyone is given a different uh, gift from by the Almighty. We need to use that gift to score as much as we can on earth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we go back. And this is why you have uh, footballers, say, for example. Each one's wearing a different uniform, but in his on his own, he's known as a brilliant footballer. Then it, you just hit on something uh, I keep saying on this program, which is about wealth. You just said it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives different gifts to different people. Correct. And every single gift is wealth. Wow. It does not necessarily have to be money or property. It's rizq, yes. It comes in different forms. Even the gift of the gab. That's even true. an artist, a writer, a poet. That's true. all gifts from God. And you have to it's use all that wealth. Gift. Yes, use it. You have to use that gift to be able to uh, attain your paradise. Yes, that's very true. And I think uh, a lot of the young people who feel that they're not gifted at all, or they don't have anything, or no one's helped them to identify their gift, they feel like they're. Uh, you know, at law, sometimes they end up with bad habits, bad company, doing things that are just a waste of time. Uh, but if you were to empower them by, by helping them to see what they have, that is when you would be able to be, to make them as productive as possible. I'm glad we're having this conversation. See what you have, look for what you have. Look for what you have, exactly. So let me grab that steering wheel again. We're going to turn back. Here we go. And let me tell you this, that brings me back to where I started from. Wow. The point of responsibility. Wow. When you find out that these are your assets in life, this is your kind of wealth, this is what he has blessed you with, then what is your responsibility in dealing with that wealth? You actually need to make sure that you don't abuse it and you need to make sure you make the most of it. It's just like if you take a look at money itself, mm -hmm. uh, you'll understand this example through that. If I had a lot of money and I want to invest it, how would I invest it? Would I, would I just throw it anywhere or would I, would I want to look for that investment which brings me the biggest returns and the safest investment, so to speak? I think any rich businessman would do that. And he would look for the best, even if it takes a little bit of time, make sure when he puts his money, the risks are less and the uh, profit is maximum. Same applies to your gift. If I have a gift, let's say, for example, of public speaking, I need to ask myself, where am I doing this? And what am I doing? When am I doing it? And am I utilizing my time in such a way that I've balanced it between my family life, my other responsibilities? and reaching out to people with this gift that I have, subhanAllah. And if I've struck the balance, that's another very important mm -hmm. word, is the balance, then I will enjoy both this world and when I get into the hereafter, by the mercy of Allah, I will enjoy there too. Because sometimes when people look at religion, they think that religion focuses on the hereafter without any focus on this world. That's wrong. If you take a look at the dua, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, dunya hasana, it starts off with, Oh Allah, grant us goodness in this world because I'm living. This is here. Allah says, 
you do not love this world at the expense of the hereafter but you have the right to enjoy it Allah made it enjoyable why are the things that uh, are enjoyable because Allah wants you to say enjoy uh, the fruits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is given you but make sure that you don't do it at the expense of the entire hereafter so like for example you can enjoy but halal you know it doesn't need to go into that which is haram and so on so I, I think that uh, to strike this balance is what really makes life very very interesting because while you're preparing for the hereafter you're actually uh, enjoying this world uh, to a great degree and reaching out to as many people as possible preparing for the hereafter in fact I am one of those who actually thinks who actually believes and and who teaches that if you forget about the hereafter and just start enjoying this world with, without the hereafter in the equation, it actually is not enjoyment. It's very temporary. It becomes burdensome. It becomes stressful. Uh, a person who says, okay, I'm going to party every Friday, they end up on drugs and alcohol, and for them, that's, they, they can afford it, and it's the life. I promise you that there comes a time when you start becoming depressed. You get sick of it, tired of it. What's this all about? I've got the money. I'm partying. I've got all these people around who really think I'm a big person and, and they look up to me as a role model, but I, I sleep with sleeping pills and I need antidepressants. Oh, isn't that sad? But that's so common. It's becoming mm -hmm. more and more common. The reason is we've taken faith out of the equation. Once you die, that is when you will actually be in that state for longer than you ever lived. You know, like if I lived for 70 years, 80, 90, say, for example, mm -hmm. I would actually then, if I died, I would be dead for longer than that 90 years. Uh, you know, uh, after 200, 300 years, I would say, well, I, I've passed away and it's been 200 years and I was only alive for 70 years. So it goes to show which one is longer and more overla everlasting. Mm -hmm. Somewhere and down the line, finite mathematics fades into the background, doesn't it? That's true, that's <laughs> true. In fact, which one is everlasting in the sense that the hereafter is forever? Absolutely. And uh, brother, I have something else to share with you. Yes. Which is, there's always an infinity ahead of us. But our time here is always limited, just like this program. Wow, that's great. <laughs> our time is also limited. And unfortunately, we've run out of the time we have for this evening. Oh, brilliant. It's very nice to, to have met you and to have uh, had this beautiful program, mashallah. You should be with me again. You should be with me inshallah. again. Inshallah. I am not going to say goodbye to you. I, I will not do that. I refuse to do that. Khair, inshallah. Therefore, uh, the only thing I can say to you is, inshallah, we'll be back with we'll you. meet again, inshallah. Bi-idhnillah. Barakallah fiqh. Jazakallah khair. Jazakumullah. So, ladies and gentlemen, my brother and I, we discussed about people being in positions of responsibility. And we specifically narrowed it down, I think, to parents. Sometimes parents fail in their responsibility. Sometimes adults fail in their responsibility towards younger people. People in positions of authority sometimes fail. So what, what choice do we have? Do we, when we get the power in our hands, hit back? Like kids grow up, you know, kids who have not been looked after properly by their parents, do they need to hit back? Or do we need to rise above that? And sometimes tell us that we are greater, higher, than the pettiness of it. Come to think of it, at the end of the day, wouldn't it be better for all of us to shed that extra baggage of all the resentment, all the hatred that we might have accrued in our past, simply to let go. And as my brother said, to forgive, but never forget but not forgetting in the sense, just keep it as a fact of life. Okay, this happened, so what? And then rise above it. I think that would be a better idea, something good that all of us can do for ourselves if we can let go of the hatreds that we've had in our past and then learn to look forward and live a happier, better, more fulfilled and enjoyable life. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what I wish for you, a fulfilled, happy life that you look forward to as the years roll by. And then hopefully, at the end of it, you'll be blessed. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having been part of my evening. And may your life be long and prosperous and happy. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.